Hello and welcome. Today we are checking out the Swarovski TM35 thermal clip-on. Okay, so Justin tells me that unboxing videos are so hot right now, so I've got the box, which is of course, box shaped, and we're gonna take off this sleeve here, set it aside, and go for the unit itself. This nice little packaging here has this rather large soft case that's included. And you look at the soft case and you're thinking, geez, how big is this thermal clip on? Then you open up the, the, the case and it's this. So the, the uh, good thing is, this case will hold not only your TM35, but it'll also hold spare batteries, the mounting adapter, straps, and all that sort of thing. Now, speaking of the adapter, it is not included with the thermal, but I've got one here, which also comes in a box-shaped box. And as we pop it open, you get the adapter itself, of course, and this little Allen key and a manual. Not much to see on that manual. Here's the basic gist of it. This Allen key, you can adjust a few things. There's a series of, of Allen heads on the mount here. That is so that when you have it installed, you can adjust the rotational setting of it so you can have the lever where you want it and so you can have the actual thermal unit itself facing a certain direction. You do have the ability to loosen and tighten the clamp force on this, but I will say these come from Swarovski fine-tuned already for the scope that you're putting it on. So in this case, we have a 42, got a 42 mil Z8 here. So you shouldn't need to touch this, but if you do need to, it's pretty easy. And this is a pretty solid piece at about 230 bucks. It is a really important part that connects your really expensive thermal to your really expensive scope. So it's really good that they made this out of really strong aluminum instead of old shovels. Now, when used on a Swarovski scope, they guarantee a point of impact shift of 1.5 inches or less at 100 yards. I do expect that to be less though. Swarovski is uh, pretty good about those sorts of guarantees. So I do expect uh, your impact shift to be a little bit less. Now the way these are notated is a little bit different than some other thermal clip-ons that you might have seen. A bunch of other thermal clip-ons will go off of the, the outside diameter of the objective lens. So you would need to know this measurement right here. Since these are designed to go on the Swarovski scopes for simplicity, they have just notated it by the scope's objective lens. So this being a 42 millimeter, this is marked as a 42. The actual outside diameter is probably closer to 48, to be honest, but uh, that's that kind of brings us to our, our next point. These are not guaranteed to work on other optics, and especially if you do make yours fit on a different scope, it's not guaranteed to maintain that inch and a half or less point of impact shift. To install, it's pretty straightforward. Take your thermal, Take this little cap off. There's a ring right here that a little bit of force comes right off. Set that aside. And then you will thread the adapter directly onto the back of it. Then to install the optic, loosen that, shove it on, and tighten. And that's pretty much it. It's gonna sit quite happily like that. And one thing you might notice down here is how much extra clearance do you need over your barrel to fit something like this? And uh, the answer to that is at least two millimeters. So if you have two millimeters or more space between your scope and your barrel right now, you're good with this here. But if you are the type to only want to put a piece of paper between your scope and your barrel, might need to go with some taller rings. So now that it's on, what is this thing like to use. Uh, short answer, it is fantastic. Uh, at only 18 ounces, it's not really gonna add too, too much weight to the system. It's not gonna 
upset the weight and balance too much of your rifle. And uh, as far as magnification, that's often the most frequently asked question about using clip-on thermal. How much power can you put behind it? Now, there's no solid right or wrong answer to that because as you zoom in, the quality just gets less and that less and less. So there's not much of a hard line answer to it. But I did mess about with this. It was fantastic, up to about eight power, pretty good at 10. And I had this on a, a different Swarovski. I even put it up to 15 power. And even though uh, it's, I'm not gonna see too, too much resolution, if I needed to make a shot on something that I knew was a hog or a coyote, then uh, that would be doable out to a couple hundred yards. Now, granted at 15 power, I mean, you'd struggle to find the difference between say a horse and a fox, but as long as you knew that what you're looking at was a good target, still able to make that shot. And as far as distance goes, I'd say a practiced shooter with this sort of setup, on a hog or coyote, something of, of that size, I'd probably say you're looking at about five to 600 yards, maybe thereabout. I'm sure someone who's really practiced will be able to shoot this further. For most cases, for most people, I'd say we're probably looking at about three to 400. And uh, that's only because of the challenges that come with that when it comes to target recognition and such. Um, the farther out you go, the more power you put behind the thermal, the less resolution you'll have. And that's not a knock on this, that's just how it is. So you wanna make sure that you're actually shooting a, a coyote, not just the neighbor's dog. So um, that sort of thing is very important to think about. Speaking of, of uh, distance, if you own one of these and you do make a pretty long range shot, I would love to hear about it just for the sake of uh, seeing what's, what's possible with this thing. So if you do make a pretty long shot, give me a call or comment below, shoot us off an email. Would love to hear about it. The refresh rate is 60 hertz, so it has a very smooth image. It's not choppy as you're trying to scan and uh, track an animal. It also has a pretty nice feature that does conserve battery. So if you tilt the scope up or down by 70 degrees or more, like if you sling the rifle or stow the rifle, or if you angle it left or right by more than 30 degrees, it'll turn off the display for you. And that's gonna be really good to conserve that battery. And then as soon as you bring it back to proper sort of orientation, it'll flick right back on and you're good to go. All right, back to the box. It'll come with a single battery, which will give you seven hours of continuous use. And it'll come with a charging system as well. This uh, charging base here can fit two batteries at once to charge, and it'll come with micro USB charging wire. The battery itself, I really like this design because it's simple. It's just a twist and out comes the old battery, in goes the new one, and you can do this in the cold with gloves on in just a few seconds and you're good to go. There's nothing to unthread and have to worry about putting that back on. There's no battery cap or anything like that. It's just twist and out and then you're good. So I do like that design. Now, should you want to pop it off and use it as a handheld scanner, very easy to do so. You could even just leave the adapter on. That'll kind of treat it as a little, uh, little eye cup there. The image is not going to be fantastic. Um, if you're used to other more dedicated handheld scanners, because it's meant to be seen with magnification behind it, the screen itself within the thermal is a bit small, but in a pinch, if you do want to use it as a handheld, it's very easy to do so there. And if you want to more uh, correctly use it as a handheld, if that's the right word to use, you can pop this thread cover back on and like their binos, it does have this nice little eye cup here. Now, just out of curiosity, I wanted to see if this eye cup was shared with any of their binos. Um, it's not. I tried it on pretty much all of them, the ELs, the NLs, the SLCs, the CLs and all that. Um, I was just curious. Maybe yours goes down in the field and you need to borrow one from your thermal maybe, but uh, that is not the case. So if you do uh, lose your eye cup here or if it breaks, it is specific to this thermal. As far as uh, protection goes, it'll come with this little cap on the back of it for here, and also on the front, a nice flip cap as well. 
I'll tell you what's also nice. Swarovski does a really good job at just making whatever it is that they make just look really, really nice. I mean, it's a clip-on thermal. You wouldn't really expect to have to put any artwork into it, but it's, it's simple, it's streamlined, it's a very handsome piece. So that'll wrap up the Swarovski TM35 clip-on thermal. If you have any further questions, please give us a call. We can talk about it. We're starting to have these trickle in pretty soon. I, I hope the adapters pretty soon as well. Uh, so please just keep on hanging in there with us. We know a lot of you have been waiting for these for a very long time, but we're almost there. Also, um, check out our podcast. We have a group therapy podcast, as it's called. It's a place where we can talk about things for a bit of a longer stint instead of just a short video like this. So this next one coming up, we are talking about long range shooting. I uh, sit down with Connor and uh, Nolan and talk to them about getting into long range shooting and what to learn and, and all that. Definitely worth paying attention to and you can find that on YouTube and, and also where you listen to your podcast. Of course, please give us a like and subscribe. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram and we'll see you next time.